My name's Karen Kellner, and I've been asked to talk to you a little bit today about conducting, not to the actual basics of what it is we do when we move our arms as conductors. On a very elementary level, let me tell you that the right hand is basically the timekeeper. Cuando menvo, this aria of which we spoke and are speaking, is written in 3-4 time. You've probably heard that before because that's what most waltzes are, and cuando menvo is a kind of a waltz. A 3-4 pattern looks like this. You always have what we call a downbeat in any pattern. Two, three, four, five, six. What goes up as an upbeat has to always come down, hence the word downbeat. And a 3-4 pattern looks like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. So this arm is constantly in motion in any kind of conducting. In a piece like Puccini's La Boheme, it's through composed, which means that the music never stops until the end of an act. So we go from one meter, which is the three, four time I alluded to, to another meter, two, four, to six, eight, to four, four, back to three, four, and it, this is the job of the right hand to always let the orchestra personnel, remember they have only a single part, know where we are in this huge, complicated mix of things. As long as I'm doing this, and as long as you, the violist, because that's where you are sitting in relation to me, the conductor, as long as you see this, one, two, three, one, two, three, you know we're in a three, four pattern. If all of a sudden I change to one, two, one, two, one, two, we've entered into a place where it's in two. One, two, one, two. Now I'm going to go into four. Here we're still in two, two, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. And that's the very basic level. Believe me, timekeeping is the least thought of idea in a conductor's head when he or she is conducting any kind of a major piece. But it's a terribly essential thing. Because if this arm stops, the orchestra stops. Now while all of this is going on, here we have this independent left hand. What is it doing? Left hand is the expressive hand, we hope. Now we have conductors, you know, all of us. I'm sure I fall into the category myself many times, where we do a certain passage in mirror, particularly when you're in an orchestra pit and there are people out to the sides more than even in front of you. But what the left hand does in opera, a lot, of course, is cue singers. You come in here, you come in there. <laughs> be louder, be less, be less loud, be smooth. The left hand, once it's freed from, once it has its own autonomy, it's free to do basically what's needed in any kind of an expressive way musically. So that if you're singing quando men vo, da 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 da, and then you come in, and then the whole chorus comes in. So I hope that's given you a bit of an idea of what the left hand does vis-a-vis -vis the orchestra. Dynamically, it's very important. Dynamically, in music, means loud, soft. Uh, this is the fast, slow hand. <laughs> this is the loud, soft hand. This is where do I come in. This is how do I play. Do I play gently? Do I play bombastically? You'll see conductors doing all sorts of different gestures. And every conductor, like any walking person or any person seated, everybody has his or her own uh, personality. So these, ge these gestures are translated in a way that's unique to whatever individual is doing them, but universal to the world of musicians.